Parshas Bracious. It's the first Parsh and Sefer Bracious. We're beginning anew. The cycle starts. It's the book of creation. The Torah tells us how God created the world in six days and he rested on the seventh. The culmination of creation was when God created man and women. Adam and Chava were created directly by God. They are the only two beings that share this distinction. Everyone else that comes into this world comes in through a mother. And the mother came into this world from her mother and goes all the way back to the original mother. But Adam and Chav were created directly by God and that makes them special. They spoke to God. They were aware they were speaking to God. They didn't have to believe in God because they actually saw Him. What makes which makes it so much harder to understand what's transpired in this portion. The Torah tells us the story. It's a well-known story. Eve, Chava, she goes to take a walk off on her own. She leaves the presence of her husband and she's checking out the Garden of Eden. And there's a being which is called a Nachash. For lack of better translation, we're going to call the Nachash a snake, but the Nachash was so much more uh, so much more than a snake. I mean, the Nachash was a being that had hands and feet and it stood and it spoke. The only other creature similar to a Nachash was Adam and Chava themselves. The Nachash had the form of a person. And the Nachash uh, engages Chava in conversation. And the Nachash says, So, look at all these fruit trees in Gan Eden. It's, it's, it's indeed a, a gorgeous place. It's magnificent. He said, I bet you can't eat any of them. They're all off limits. And Chava responds to the snake. She says, that's not true. We could eat anything. It's all for us. Hashem made the world for us. He made the beautiful trees for us. And He didn't restrict us in any way. We could eat all of them. And the Nachash, the snake, responds. And he says, are you certain? Do you actually mean that you could eat all the fruits all from all the trees? And Chava, of course, responded, Well, we could eat all of them. There's just one exception. But we have plenty to eat because there's just one that we can't eat. It's called the Etadas, the tree of knowledge. It's the tree of knowledge of Taiv and Ra, of good and evil. God told us that we can't eat that one. And the... Uh, we don't know exactly what transpired between them. But at the end of the conversation, the snake convinced Chava to take a fruit off the tree of knowledge and eat it, bringing death and destruction to the world. It was a calamity, an unparalleled calamity. It was the first of error, the first sin. And it was, it was, a, it was in direct rebellion to God's explicit command. What was it? What could he have told her that convinced her that it was the right thing to eat that fruit? We don't know exactly what it was. According to uh, some versions, it was a grapevine or one of the seven species. It could have been a pomegranate or a fig or a date. In fact, um, there's eight possibilities in the words of our sages what it could have been. The one fruit that's not on the list is an apple. There's no Jewish source that it was an apple. That's a Christian source. And the Jewish source is one of the seven species that, it, that the land of Israel was blessed with. Or according to the Holy Zohar, it was an esrog. In any case, she ate the esrog, grape, fig, date, pomegranate, whatever it was. And the world changed. It was never the same. It was never ever the same. It was not the world that God wanted. With her eating the forbidden fruit, the world changed from the world that God wanted it to be to a world that is not the way he wants it. And the, you know, there's an entire history of thousands of years that were on a road to somehow get back to Gan Eden and repair what she did. Why did she do it? The, you know, if, you, if, if someone doesn't have faith, if we are limited in our perception of God, of Hashem, so we could understand how it's possible to do an Avera, to commit a sin. But with Adam and Chava, that cannot be the explanation. They saw God, they heard God, and they knew they didn't want them to eat it. There's only one 
possible solution to this quandary. And this is it. Somehow, the snake convinced Chava and subsequently Adam that Hashem told them they could eat from all the other trees. Hashem told them they cannot eat from the tree of knowledge. And that Hashem secretly wishes for them to disobey Him. This is the only solution. She ate from the tree even though she knew that God said no because somehow she was convinced that God wants her to disobey him. It's a test. It's a test. Are you going to follow the, I'll call it superficial, or on the surface meaning of God's words, or are you going to go beneath the surface and understand what God really wants? You ever had someone come over to your house, and uh, you offer them something to drink, or something to eat, and what do they say? Oh, no, don't bother. Okay, so what do you do? You don't give them a drink because they said don't bother. Of course you don't do that. You say, oh, I just happen to have a nice cold glass of lemonade. It's a shame for it to go to waste. Do you think you could bring yourself to drink it? And then the person who's really thirsty gulps it down. Just something called looking past the plain meaning of words. God said don't eat it. And somehow Chava understood that God says don't eat it but he really wants her to eat it. Let's go a step further. Why would someone think like that? They would think like that because they thought that God wants them to serve them from a different place. Serving God on the first day of creation, when they were just created and opened up their eyes for the very first time, is not much of a trick. It's not much of a challenge. Everything is clear. You don't even want to do anything wrong. There's nothing wrong to do. There's no two butcher shops, the kosher butcher shop, the non-kosher butcher shop. Everything is so clear, you, you see everything. Everything is going wonderful. You don't, have any, you don't have a hard time, you don't get depressed, you don't get broken. It's not hard to make a living. Nobody, there's nobody that, that depresses you by making a negative comment. There's no challenges, there's no negativity. Serving God, that's easy. Once you cross the line and you do something forbidden, so what happens to you? It becomes so much harder to find your way back. The snake told Chava and subsequently Adam that God created his world for a purpose. That purpose is for you to choose to serve him. And he wants you to serve him through challenges. And without doing something wrong, there are no challenges. And God deliberately put you in Gan Eden, told you you could eat from all the other trees, except for one, because God wants to see how you serve him after you eat from that tree, after you rebel, after you go away from him. Are you capable of recognizing your shortcomings and your failure and coming back after embracing evil and making evil a part of yourself? Could you drag yourself back to what you were before and come back to your loving father and beg his forgiveness and and be even greater than you were before. And he proved it to her. He said, because if that's not what God's intention, so then why did God make the tree in the first place? What's the point of making something that you're not allowed to eat? If you're not allowed to eat it, so then don't make it. And if he made it, you must do it. I can't say that with this we understand this to its very core, but it's definitely the beginning. And this is what she did. Chava and Adam were tzaddikim. They didn't do anything wrong deliberately. They didn't want to do anything wrong deliberately. If they committed this sin, which was the most heinous crime in the history of the world, they did it because they believed it was the right way to do. They were wrong. Because when God commands you not to do something, that's, you know, you could think, you could understand, you could try and understand deeper and deeper and deeper, but the bottom line is, when he says not to do it, you don't do it. You accept it, that's when you turn your brain, you know, do all your thinking, all your calculations, and all your understanding, and, and question, and ask questions, and get answers, and advance your understanding of the subject matter, but you don't cross the line. You don't cross that line. But the question of the snake still remains. What's the purpose of evil? Okay, they were wrong. She should not have eaten the fig, or the date, or the pomegranate, or the asterisk. But what's the purpose of evil? The Holy Sefer Isaiah 
tells us over a story. There was once a king, there's always a king, and he had a son who was a prince. And this prince, he fell into decadence, and he, he cavorted with immoral women. And the king couldn't stand it because the son was destroying himself. He was dragging himself down. And the king begged, he beseeched his child, stay away from such places. Don't be in the sunset. I'd love to, I want to, I just can't because I see one of them and I'm attracted. And before I know it, it's all over, I can't do it. And the king tried everything. And finally the king told his son that this is your last chance. You can't do this anymore. Promise me you're never going to do it again. And the son gave the assurances. And the king was not sure whether the son was strong enough. The king hired his most, his most loyal, loyal subject. It was a woman of unparalleled beauty with this very strong allure. And she was totally, totally devoted to the king. She didn't have an, as, as a, her own sense of self. She was totally bottled. Bottled means that there was, not, there was no, not an iota of herself that she thought of herself. Her only wish was to serve the king. And the king says, I have a mission for you, and only you could do it. She said, what's the mission? She said, I want you to use everything at your command, all your talents, all your capabilities, all your allure, to try and tempt my son. She says, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. He's your son. I love him. I love you. And the king says, you got to do it. I have to test my son. I have to, you know, I want, I want to see, I want my son to, to have a challenge. I want him to be challenged. I want him to overcome. I want him to grow. I want him to break free. And if you don't do this, he'll never break free. If I keep him away from evil, he'll never break free. You have to do it, and you have to do it with all your sincerity, with everything, everything you could muster. She says, okay. And she tried everything. And the son, <laughs> he didn't go down that same well-traveled road road. He was truth. He was faithful to his father. He didn't, destroy, he didn't destroy himself. He stayed pure. He was happy that he passed his tests. His father was happy that he passed his tests. And most of all, the king's subject, who tried everything to get him to sin, to, to get him to, to distract him and to drag him down. When he passed the test, when he resisted her, she was the happiest of all because that's what she wanted. She wanted it more than anything else. God made the tree of knowledge. And God made evil for a reason. Not to eat it. He made it for Adam and Chava to see it, to understand it, to be attracted by it, to understand it very deeply. They understood that fruit. They understood it so deep. They understood how much pleasure, how much benefit they're going to get from that esrig. She saw it. She was, she was very, very perceptive. She saw it down, down deep into the core of that esrig. And she saw how good it would be for her. And the point, the point of the exercise, the reason why that esrig existed was to entice her, was to seduce her. And then she's to break away. That's why God created the Etadas, the tree of knowledge, and that's why God created the presence of evil. It's there for us to be exposed to. It's there for us to be attracted to. It's there for us to delve into and understand it, but then to reject it. The Etadas was there to overcome. It wasn't created to actually fail by eating it. May we all have a powerful will to see the best part of ourselves and to be able to see the falseness in the allure and the attraction of evil. It's not there to build us up. It's there to test us. Have a wonderful Shabbos, Kaddish.